the ayyam al-beed or the white days when the moon is at its full. The 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar month. I'm not talking about the solar months. I'm talking about the lunar months because in Islam we follow the lunar calendar. The 13th, 14th and 15th of every month. The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you fast three days every month, then it is as if you fast the entire year. The whole year. You will get the rewards of fasting the entire year if you just fast three days every month. And imagine if you make this as a habit in your life, that I am going to fast three days every month, the 13th, 14th and 15th of every month, then it will be as if your entire life was spent fasting. Because you will get the rewards for the entire year for every time you do this in the year. And the Prophet ﷺ himself, it was his sunnah to fast Mondays and Thursdays. Fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. And he said that these are the days, Mondays and Thursdays, when our deeds are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your weekly deeds are shown to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Monday and every Thursday. And he said that I want that when Allah reviews my deeds, I am in a state of fasting. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Imagine, imagine Allah looks at your deeds and you have a lot of problems in your weekly deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the angels, what is he doing right now? What is she doing right now? And the angels say, he's fasting. She is fasting right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might just forgive those evil deeds, those sins, those difficult problems which we have to face on the day of judgment. It is better to, to get rid of them right now. So Mondays and Thursdays, if you can do more than three days every month, then you should try to aim fasting Mondays and Thursdays. And the best of the fasting the Prophet said was the fasting of Prophet Dawood Prophet David, peace be upon him. He used to fast on alternate days. Every other day he would fast. And this is the upper limit. We are not allowed to fast more than this because then that would fall into extremism in worship. And Islam does not allow extremism in anything. So try to fast 13th, 14th and 15th of every month. If you can do more than that, then do Mondays and Thursdays. And if you are able to do more than that, then fast every other day. And this is the best of the fasting. Imagine Prophet Dawood he was a king. He was a king, he had all of the luxuries of, of life, and yet what kind of a life he was spending. Every other day of his life, he's fasting for the sake of Allah. So we should start somewhere. We should start somewhere. And I thought that I would present to you some of the virtues of fasting today. Maybe this will excite you, and maybe this will motivate all of us to start fasting. Not just in the month of Ramadan, but even outside the month of Ramadan. One of the great virtues of fasting is that the Prophet said, there is a special gate, there is a special door in paradise which has been reserved for the people who fast. And this gate is known as a rayyan, Baba rayyan, a special gate made for those people who fast. Now, could it be possible, possible, my dear brother and sister, that a gate has been made for you and you don't enter through it? Can it be possible that if you fast and a gate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a gate for you to enter Jannah, but you will not enter Jannah? This is not possible. So this is good news for the people who fast. This means they will for certain enter Jannah because there is a gate calling upon them. There is a gate waiting for them. Also the Prophet wasallam he said, Oh young people, the men and the women, the youngsters, he said, you should get married. Marriage is from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. There should be no man within the Muslim community who is not married. And there should be no woman in the Muslim community who is not married. Everyone should be protected in the institution of marriage. Because marriage helps. The Prophet peace be upon him said, it is the best way of lowering your gaze, guarding your eyes. But then the Prophet peace be upon him said, and if you are not able to get married, due to whatever reason, then fast a lot. 
because fasting will help diminish your sexual desires. SubhanAllah. Beautiful benefit of fasting, especially if you are a youngster, especially if you are in a situation where you are not able to get married, then what should you take refuge in? In fasting. You should seek protection in fasting. How does fasting help diminish sexual desire? What is the greatest desire the human being has? Is hunger and thirst. Is hunger and thirst. Sexual desire is not the greatest desire a human being has. When you are hungry and thirsty, you forget about everything else. All you are interested in is some food at that point. What happens when you fast? You are able to control the most basic, the most strong desire you have in your body. Hunger. When you fast, you are able to control the desire for hunger. And if you can control the desire for hunger, wouldn't it be easy then for you to control other desires? Other desires are much easier to control than hungers. That's how fasting helps give you control over your sexual desires, diminish your sexual desires. So this is the second benefit for those people who fast a lot. They are able to have control over their desires. And whoever is able to control, whoever is able to tame his desires, then those are the ones who are successful. What greater success would you have as a believer if you are able to control yourself? So that is the second benefit. The third benefit, the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned in Hadith Qudsi, he said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, all the deeds of the son of Adam are for him. Fasting is for me, and I will reward it. All your other deeds except fasting are for you. But fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward it. What does it mean that fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course, all the deeds we do are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but there is a unique element in the worship of fasting. There is no other form of worship like fasting because it has something unique in it. In all the other forms of worship, there is a possibility of showing off. When I pray, you are watching me pray. I could be praying to show off. When I give charity, at least the one who's receiving charity from me knows that I'm giving charity. When I go for Hajj, lots and lots of people are watching me, lots and lots of people know that I'm making Hajj, there is an element of Aliyah or showing off. But fasting, there is no element of Aliyah. Right now, just by looking at me, you don't know whether I'm fasting or not. Just by looking at you, I don't know if you're fasting or not. There is no way I can know whether you are in a state of fasting or not. There is no element of showing off in fasting. That is why the hypocrites do not fast. The hypocrite will come to the masjid and pray. The hypocrite might even go for hajj, give charity, do all kinds of good deeds, but fasting, why would the hypocrite fast? <coughs> he might say that I am fasting, he might claim that I am fasting, but he would never fast. Because there is no benefit for the hypocrite, there is no element of showing off. Only the true believer fasts. <coughs> Only the true believer fasts. So if you are somebody who loves fasting, and who fasts a lot, then Alhamdulillah, that is a good sign. But if you are somebody who avoids fasting, who does not like fasting too much, then you need to check out Iman. Why are you doing these other good deeds then? If you don't want to fast, why do you want to pray? Why do you want to give charity? Why do you want to do other good deeds? Maybe you are doing it for the sake of the people, not for the sake of Allah. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fasting is for me and I will reward it. And you know this is a beautiful thing. Imagine on the day of judgment, two people come before Allah. One person, he just needs one good deed to get to paradise. He's one short. One good deed required. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pulls out his card for fasting, says one good deed, go to paradise. The other person comes, he needs one million good deeds to go to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pulls out his card for fasting, one million good deeds, go to paradise. Fasting is for me and I will reward it. Only Allah knows what rewards are there for fasting. So wouldn't you want to have that card available for you on the day of judgment? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can override all your evil deeds and give you as much
much reward as he wants so that you are able to be successful. Fasting is that unique form of worship. No other form of worship about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. Fasting is the only one. So we should try and fast. Number four, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are two moments of happiness for the person who fasts. Two moments when the fasting person is full of joy, full of happiness. The first one, when he breaks his fast. And the second one, when he meets his Lord. Wouldn't you want these two moments of happiness? The first one, we recognize a little bit. When you're fasting in Ramadan, and it's time for you to break your fast, how do you feel inside? When that first sip of water goes in, how do you feel inside? How do you feel about being successfully able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fasting? How do you feel that you were able to fast uh, uh, properly before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for His sake that entire day? Don't you feel satisfaction? Don't you feel happiness inside? Don't you feel joy inside? That is the first moment of happiness. The second one, we cannot appreciate right now. The second one, we don't know how the taste of that happiness will be. Because that we will experience when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But trust me, that will be a greater moment of happiness. The kind of happiness you feel when you break your fast will be nothing compared to when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For sure, Allah will make you happy. For sure, Allah will make you happy if you are somebody who fasts. So there are two moments of happiness for the fasting person. Number one, when he breaks his fast. And number two, when he meets his Lord. The virtue of fasting number five. The Prophet وسلم, in the same Hadith Qudsi, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the smell which comes out from the mouth of the fasting person is dearer to Allah than must. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about? What kind of smell comes out of the, the mouth of the fasting person? Is it a nice smell, a pleasant smell, or an ugly, difficult smell to, to, to be around? It's a difficult, ugly smell to be around. It's not a nice smell. It's a nasty smell. Why? Because your stomach is empty for hours. And there are these juices which are, you know, 